as a former AP stat student, I know, or I think I know, that the average height of a woman is 64 and a half inches with standard deviation two and a half inches. So when I discovered my island of Priorius, it appeared as the women there might be slightly shorter than that. If I'm going to sample 50 women and use a significance level of 5%, what sample mean do I need to get to cause me to reject my original belief? So let's draw what we've got. We've got a normal curve. The center of that normal curve is 64 and a half inches because I'm doing HO mu is 64 and a half, HA mu is less than 64 and a half, and it's less than because we we're testing a shorter hypothesis. Now as I go through the lesson today, I'm going to sort of skim over the defining of terms, the checking of conditions, those kind of things to make sure you can get the mathematics. Then tomorrow I'll expand it a little bit to make sure that we actually write up all this stuff. The standard deviation is what? It's 2.5 over the square root of 50 because I'm going to sample 50 women. Now it says, hey, let's put a fence here at the 5% alpha level. So if there's my fence, what do I do if I get an answer to the right of the fence? On this one, I'm going to fail to reject HO. And over here, I'm going to reject HO. And so the question that I've stated right now is, look, if I'm going to take a sample of 50 women, what does their average height need to be to get me at the fence or to the left of the fence? Because if I get an average that's right at the fence, then my p-value will be 0.05, telling me to reject HO. If I get a value to the left of the fence, my p-value is smaller than 0.05, telling me to reject HO. So what is this value right here? That's what it is that I'm trying to figure out. Well, what I know is that if I standardize this, oh, let's do it in red. I can look up 0.05 on my pink chart, or perhaps use my calculator. And I see that the Z star, or the critical Z value, is negative 1.645. So in terms of Zs, this is negative 1.645. And what I want to do is take that negative 1.645 and unstandardize it. Put it back in terms of X bars or in terms of inches of women. So I'm going to, I know that the formula is Z equals X bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of N. So it's negative 1.645 equals X bar, what I'm looking for, minus the original mu, 64 and a half. over 2.5 divided by the square root of n. I'm confident that you could work out that problem on your calculator, so I've already done it for you. X bar is 63.92. So what does that mean? What does it mean that I get an X bar of 63.92? Well, if we go out and we find a sample of 50 women, and their average was 63.92, what p-value would I get? 0.05, where I reject HO. If the x-bar of the women that I get is anywhere, don't move that, if it's anywhere over here, anywhere to the left of that bar, my p-value will be less than 0.05, so I'll reject. So what I'll do is I will reject HO if my X bar is less than or equal to 63.92. That's the rejection region in terms of X bar. Sometimes we write the rejection region in terms of Z. I will reject HO if my Z test statistic is less than or equal to 
negative 1.645. Two different ways of saying the exact same thing. Now the reason you might want to do the top one is if, for example, I as a teacher had a lot of my minions go and measure the heights of 50 women, and then they come back and they tell me if what their X bar was and whether they reject or fail to reject, this is kind of like my answer key. I know if their answer is 63.92 or less, then they should get a p-value telling them to reject. And if they get a value that's greater than 63.92, they'll get a p-value telling them to fail to reject. Now from this, and it goes along with what Alex was asking at the beginning, what is the probability of a type 1 error? So first ask yourself again, what is a type 1 error? Rejecting the null when it's true. So how often, under this red curve that I've drawn, how often do we reject the null even though it's true? 5% of the time, that's alpha. If you don't like that, if 5% is too much, move your fence. That's fine. Because 5% of the time, when the truth is 64 and a half, and I take a sample of 50 women, I'm going to get an X bar that's strange enough that it tells me to reject HO. But HO is really true. That's the type 1 error. So now I want to examine the probability of a type 2 error. And we said the probability of a type 2 error is known as beta. And I've asked, what is the probability of a type 2 error when the true mean height on my island is 63 and a half inches? And this is the part where I'm going to start using the colors because I think it'll help everything out. So I want to start by simply rewriting what I did at the very beginning. And so we'll use pink to represent a normal curve because that matches up with our pink chart. And the center here was 63 and a half. Standard deviation was 2.5 divided by the square root of 50. Sorry, it wasn't 63.5, it was 64.5. That was my HO. It's a one-sided less than test where mu is less than 64.5. And I like to draw my fences green because the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And I know if I get an answer to the left of that fence or to the outside of that fence, I'm going to reject HO, and if I get an answer on the inside of the fence, I'm going to fail to reject HO. And I think it's really advisable to actually write reject HO and fail to reject HO on there like I've done, because in a second there's going to be a lot more on the graph and it can easily get confusing for you. The alpha level was 0.05. Alpha and orange sound like they start with the same letter, so I'll do that in orange. And this area right here is my alpha region. We figured out on the previous slide that this number right here was 63.92 in terms of X bars. But in terms of Z's, this was 0 and this was negative 1.645. And so hopefully these colors will not be confusing, but rather they'll be a tool to help you understand what we're doing. So this question is asking about the probability of a type 2 error. A type 2 error occurs when you fail to reject HO, but you should have. And in this case, the reason you should have rejected HO is because the new mu, the true mu, is 63 and a half, not 64 and a half. So what if the new true blue mu is it 63 and a half? So I'm going to draw a nor another normal curve that has a center at 63 and a half. And I did that in blue because it's the new true blue mu. In reality, those two curves, the pink curve and the blue curve, should look identical. Just one of them is shifted over. So there's nothing magic about the height differential or tails or anything like that. It's the same curve. One is just shifted uh, to the side. So I think I'm living under the pink curve. That's my null hypothesis. But in reality, as I, as I randomly select these women, the averages are falling under the blue curve instead. So how likely is it 
that I'll get an answer under the blue curve that's close enough to this, that 64 and a half, to encourage me to keep believing 64 and a half, or at least to fail to discourage me that it's wrong. In other words, how often do I get an answer over here? This area is beta. I'll just leave it at blue. Beta, the probability of a type 2 error. Beta, the probability that I fail to reject HO when I should have. Because HO isn't true, this new true blue alternative mu is the case. Sometimes that's called mu sub A for an alternative value of mu, a specific alternative value. So let's figure out what beta is. Well, beta is the probability that I get an X bar greater than or equal to 63.92. Greater than or equal to my fence in the area where I fail to reject HO. Now, here's the big wrinkle. The next thing, as you probably suspect, is to standardize the Z. The wrinkle is this. It's X bar minus the new true blue mu. Now, instead of standardizing according to the pink curve, I'm going to standardize according to the blue curve over 2.5 divided by the square root of 50. Again, that's just a little calculator deal. Turns out it's 1.18, meaning this value is 1.18 standard deviations above 63 and a half. It's 1.645 standard deviations below the original belief, but it's 1.18 standard deviations above the new true blue mu. And when I look that value up on my pink chart, and of course, if you're using your table, you need to do uh, one minus to get the area to the right, you get this. So the probability of a type two error is almost 12%.